Yes! From December 2018 to March 2020, I watched three movies a week every week, except for one week where I watched two. But still, I managed to watch uh, 178 movies in a 66-week period. And then the pandemic royally screwed me over, but now I'm back to watching two movies a week because baby steps. Because it's time, once again, for the triumphant return of Steve Stubbs of the Week! Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. And so this week is my fourth week back to going to the movies regularly. I saw two more movies for a combined total of five, six, seven, eight movies that I have seen since I returned to theaters. But now I'm starting to think how long will how long will America continue to pretend that everything is back to normal when it absolutely isn't? You know? Yeah. Starting to get worrisome that things aren't getting better. But, it, hey, um, yeah. So, uh, this week I saw the following. I'm really hungover, by the way, if you're just joining us. This week I saw the following two movies in theaters The Forever Purge and Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. Okay. Trying to watch things with my AMC A-list membership that I would never pay money to go see. And that was in my mind when I watched these two movies this week. So every week I pick one of the movies to be my movie pick of the week that I want to discuss a little bit more. But first, let's discuss the movie that was not chosen as my movie pick of the week, Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. This is a CNN documentary about Anthony Bourdain, and I was, I, I went to the last showing, I was the only person in the theater, I was interested to see it because uh, I knew literally nothing about Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. At all, period, whatsoever. So I was, I was interested. I was like, oh, this will be interesting. Because it, the way that I always saw it was um, celeb being into a celebrity chef is no offense, a white person thing. Yeah. Is the way I always saw it. And so I never cared about Anthony Bourdain. Um, just... Unless you're not native to the country. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, there's, then you start getting into, into some decent, half, halfway decent diversity. Yeah. So, so, I, so I went into the documentary. 100% blind and uh, real incredible documentary I didn't realize that Anthony Bourdain was basically the Hunter S. Thompson of cooks that when he was growing up when he was a teen in his 20s and whatever he, he was a heroin addict and doing a ton of drugs oh yeah and he, he got a job as like a bus boy and uh, washing dishes to pay for his drug habit, but he, he made his way to like a server and then to a uh, uh, chef and he, he in between uh, jobs, he, he decided to write a tell-all book about um, what it's like working, you know, f food service industry and that was his uh, big famous book uh, Kitchen Confidential and suddenly he was super famous and he and so he started doing a travel series and next thing you know he was a journalist and, and I, I had no idea that that Anthony Bourdain felt the same way about famous chefs as I do about famous chefs so <laughs> So that was cool. I had no idea he was such a badass. So. Oh, I, 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 no, yeah, I was a fan of Anthony Bourdain. Me too. I, I loved his shows, and, and he said a lot of the shit on, on his shows. 
you know, about being a heroin addict and all of that. You know, I mean, he he did an episode uh, from Morocco and got all naked lunch. Yeah, I I, I downloaded the the first two seasons of his first show at Cook's Tour once I got home, and so I, I've got all of those episodes on my computer to start watching. Uh, the guy's absolutely amazing. The documentary was incredible. Uh, I, I knew so little about Anthony Bourdain that I was quite surprised to learn that he fucking hung himself. Oh, did he hang himself? I, I just yeah. knew he committed suicide. He hung himself. Which in... was not a surprise either. Were you terribly surprised? Yes. You were? Yes. I, I wasn't terribly surprised because you, you could tell the man was depressed. Yeah, that's the thing about the documentary is that everyone says, I can't believe that he did this. I can't believe that he, that he would do this. I can't believe that he was suffering that much that he would do this to himself. But like when you see the documentary, it's like, oh, yeah, you, you, you know. Yeah, no, he, he, he was a dark, haunted man. And yeah, no, you can absolutely see why he did what he did. But uh, incredible documentary. Incredible and documentary. Really, and really, think about it, you know? Think about it that that you are going so far as to try to outrun your depression. You know, you yeah. are eating preserved duck eggs in Vietnam, and it's still not it's still not helping. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's like yeah. okay, great. I have done all this shit, and I still feel like crap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I I don't recall being surprised. Maybe I was surprised at the time and then I thought about it. I don't know. That's possible, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I went out of that documentary with a newfound uh, respect and admiration for Anthony Bourdain. The guy was a badass. Yes, and badass. The documentary was just absolutely incredible. So, uh, I, I, I would have, I really would have liked to have seen a, a movie or a documentary or something, but a sit down between Anthony Bourdain and Ron Perlman. They're both bad. Mm, yeah, they are. Yeah. They are very similar people. You yeah, know? I can see. And they yeah. both just say whatever the fuck they want, and, and neither one of them cared. Yeah. But I, yeah, ab absolutely incredible documentary. Can't recommend it enough. I don't think it's streaming right now. Uh, I don't think it's available as like a digitally yet. But in incredible documentary. Everyone should go see it. Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. And finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is The Forever Purge. The Forever okay. Purge. Okay. Um, first off, this movie fucked me up. Really? Okay. This movie really fucked me up. So, I saw the first Purge film that had Ethan Hawke in it, and it was okay. And then we did the second Purge movie for the podcast. Was that the second one? I'm not sure. I or did we do more than one? I don't know. I don't know. But but then there was there was like a prequel Purge movie that I didn't see. And then there was a Purge TV series that I didn't see. I I, I haven't seen all of the Purge movies. So, but the way that I figured it was, oh, the Purge films are all dumb and stupid. I'll fucking whatever. I'll go see the dumb, stupid Purge movie. Um, so the way that this plot is, is that, okay, so a new government comes in and they have stopped the purge, and the purge doesn't happen anymore, but then, hey, it's the election season, and guess what? The, the pro-purge party, whatever, is elected back in, 
And so we're restarting the purge again. And there's a bunch of tension in the country, and a lot of people think it's due to immigration, and it's due to uh, all of these foreigners uh, coming in here and stealing our jobs and right-wing extremists and yada, yada, yada. So the purge happens, and then the purge is done, but all of these far-right motherfuckers decide that you know what we're just not going to stop purging we're going to round up all of the uh, immigrants all of the foreigners all of the non-white people and start fucking killing them yeah and it's all of these far right that's this one yeah that's what this movie is and oh. that's why it's called the forever purge because because people just don't the angry white people and far right extremists and white power motherfuckers and Nazis are marching on the streets and rounding up all of the black people and Mexicans and just killing them. And whoa, okay. And, and they call it the forever purge because it's not going to stop until we finally cleanse this America. America is a country for whites and we need to get rid of... And, and so I, I went to go see this movie and I was a little bit stoned and there's like 12 people in the audience and about halfway through the movie I noticed... Number one, that I'm the only brown person in the theater. Yeah. And number two, that two of the women in the theater, I catch uh, looking at me, like giving me glances. Okay. While the movie is going on. And it hit me that like thank goodness I waited a couple of weeks to go see this Purge movie because if I had seen it on day one when it came out then I would have seen it with a packed theater and being in Oklahoma being being in Oklahoma there's a good chance it's like the Joker movie. It's like the goddamn yeah. Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. There's a good chance if I had seen this on opening day that some of the people in the audience would be rooting for the murderers. Yes. You know? And, and it really started to freak me the fuck out. And it, it, the, the entire movie triggered me. I wonder why. <laughs> Because you know, I, I'm in an I'm in an all white movie theater in a primarily all white city in a primarily all white state, and I'm here watching this film, and it's like fucking Mexicans, goddamn beaters, we need to fucking kill every one of them, every one of these motherfuckers, and make America the white nation that it always has been, and it's like fuck. I just wanted to see a stupid fucking Purge movie. Why are you fucking me like this? So, I, like... But, like... Like, who was this movie made for? It was supposed to be, like, a... You know, this is a Purge film. Okay, so I'm a... I'm a p producer. The Purge franchise has always been about showing, uh, show, casting a mirror onto society. And so this film, I think, has a lot to say about our current political climate. And I think it has a lot of important messages. And so, uh, so the government officials try to stop the people from purging, so now there are like tanks running through major cities trying to stop the all-white purgers from killing people, and so it's this massive battle and all these people are dying, and it gets so bad that Canada and Mexico open their borders to bring in American refugees which near the end of the film someone refers to as 
American dreamers (laughs) who have fled war-torn America. And so, like, I see why they did it, but I just wanted to see a fucking Purge movie and not feel like... The thing is, is that I, I feel that this Purge film is actually genuinely frightening to me because I'm a minority and I can 100% see this happen. I feel like for a lot of white people, this is just another purge movie. But for me and for other Latinos and Muslim and uh, Pakistani and uh, Asian and uh, black people who go to see this film, it's scarier to them because we can absolutely see this happening. Yeah. So, it's like when I went to go see uh, the first Kingsman movie, and there's a scene where uh, you see Obama's head explode, and I saw the movie in, in Oklahoma, and uh, a couple of people applauded when that happened. Okay. And that scared the shit out of me. So it's like, so when I'm watching this Purge movie, I'm like worried that people are going to start like applauding and thinking it's hilarious and then turning their attention to me. And and yeah, no, it was a scary, it was a scary fucking movie and I was absolutely triggered and I came home and I got, I started drinking and and, and got really, really high because I was just, oh, the movie fucked me up, Bonnie. Yeah. Forever Purge fucked me up. When was it? When did you see it? This week. This week. Uh, I think uh, last, this past Monday is when I saw it. Done. Fuck me up that movie. It was I, I, I haven't I haven't kept up with the Purge movies. You know. Neither did I. So, so but but I figured like a, a stupid Purge movie is a stupid Purge movie. I can just go see the stupid Purge movie and everything yeah. will be fine. I didn't realize that it was gonna make me feel like I have a target on my forehead. Yeah. So that wasn't fun. That was not a fun time. So. But, but hey, um, I I think that at the end of the year, when I'm making my top ten list, I think I might make it number ten on my list of the ten best movies of the year. Because as much as I will probably never see it again, it did elicit a massive emotional response from me. Yes. Yes. Which not a lot of films do. So at least there's that. But yeah, no, that movie that movie done fucked me up. Plus, uh, one of the one of the actors in it was the dad in one of the religious films that I saw when I when I was previously going to the movies all the time. He was the dad from that movie where the kid goes through the ice. Uh, Unbreakable or something like that. Really generic movie title but anyway that's the that's oh um, but yeah no yeah i I, yeah i remember the movie i remember you talking about the movie yeah so next week i already have my tickets for next week next week i will be watching the m night shamalama ding dong movie old the previews make it look really fucking wonderful and I, I'm really I never thought I'd say this but I'm really excited to go see this M. Night Shama Lama 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 the uh, Lama Lama Red Pajama movie yeah and also uh, Snake Eyes a G.I. Joe Origins film that uh, so far the reviews are unanimous hey guess what this G.I. Joe movie isn't shit. That was the same glowing reviews they gave to the Catwoman movie. Hey, this isn't 100% fucking horrible. (laughs) Don't get me wrong, it's bad, but it's not as bad as we had figured. So, so the Snake Eyes movie, I'm also excited to go see that. Uh, So join us next week for some more up-to-date, up-to-date movie reviews. 
with Save Subs of the Week. And cut on that. <laughs>